All taxes are borne by the poor. Healthpolicy101.com There is no dearth of politicians who would like to tax the rich more to fund all kinds of social programs such as free health care or even free tuition in college. However, everywhere where these policies have been tried, we see disaster. Why? The answer lies in how people save and spend their incomes. This data from the National Bureau of Labor shows that as the income of a household rises, they save a growing proportion of that income and expend a very small fraction of that income. At around a quarter million dollars a year of household income, over 75% of the income earned is not spent on personal expenditure. It is instead saved in tax saving accounts, saving accounts, or in the investment banks. In short, these capitals and monies are reinvested into the market for the benefit of everybody else. In fact, although we do not have data for millionaires and billionaires of our country, it is easy to imagine that for a person making over a million dollars a year, over 90% of the income would actually be saved and less than 10% of personal income would be spent on personal expenditure. The income saved or not spent on personal expenditure represents the capital that is invested by the earner into other means of production in the society, such as opening a new shop to make available goods and services to the society, or opening a new distribution center, a retail center, buying a crane to make more houses for everybody. Therefore, the implication of this is that when the income of the rich is taxed, there is only marginal effect on their personal expenditure and the more significant impact is that the means of production of goods and services in the society get into the control of the government. And that is our rule number one for this talk. Taxing the rich does not affect their lifestyles much. The primary effect of taxing the rich is the transfer of means of production of goods and services to the control of the government. The effect on the lifestyles of the rich is marginal when their income is taxed. Now let us take a look at the consequences of this. Shown here is a representation of how our economy is organized. To the left, you see that there are some rich men or women who own a lot of means of production, such as, for example, factories. On the right, there is the government sector, which taxes the private sector and sets up, for example, a hospital for the benefit of the people. Now, as we discussed in rule number one, if the government has been able to tax the rich people and open a hospital, this implies that at least one mean of production has to shut down because the resources that go into running this government-run hospital have come from the private sector or have come from this uh, means of production such as a factory that would have otherwise been open. So we're going to shut down one of the factories because the government has opened a hospital. Now, one of the features of a government-run operation is its wastefulness. There is no doubt ever that government operations are wasteful. Let me give you an example here. I'm showing you the annual expenditure per beneficiary by various government healthcare services such as the Veterans Affairs Administration, Medicaid, Medicare. And if you look at these numbers, these are annually 
per beneficiary. So you can see the government is spending a lot of money and the services that the beneficiary gets are probably not worth the amount of money that the government is spending. So government spending is always wasteful and the implication of that is to provide a given level of service instead of just one factory having to close down for the government to run its hospital, we have to have more factories closed down because the government is going to need a greater amount of resources than the private enterprise to provide the same level of service. Okay, so let's go ahead and close a few more factories here. So we can assume, for example, that these factories were manufacturing refrigerators that closed down. And what we see now is that in this economy that we have depicted here, the production of healthcare has gone up and it's even available to people for free. But at the same time, the production of refrigerators has gone down. And due to the wasteful nature of government operations, government regulations, and government prerequisites for qualifying for free stuff, what happens is that the total production of goods and services has gone down. So you have a little bit of more healthcare in the economy, but you have way less production of refrigerators in our case, and the total value of goods and services produced in the economy is now less compared to what it would have been if the government was not running a hospital. So that brings us to our rule number two. Government spending always reduces the total production of goods and services in an economy. The implications of this are huge. Let us consider an economy where there are just two people. There's a rich person who has a lot of money and there's a poor person who has a little bit. Suppose a car becomes available in the economy. Who do you think will buy the car? I think the rich person will buy the car with his huge amount of wealth. Now let's imagine that there are two refrigerators that are available in the economy for sale. I think both of these individuals would be interested in buying the refrigerator. But hold on a second. We only have one refrigerator that is available in the economy for sale because the factory that could have produced the other refrigerator closed down when the government taxed the rich individual so, uh, so that he could not invest in his refrigerator factory. So now we only have one refrigerator that is available for sale in the economy. And what do you think will happen now? Well, what happens now is that the price of the refrigerator goes up and it goes up till it becomes unaffordable for the poor person so that only the rich person is then able to buy the refrigerator. And we can see how once the goods and services in the economy are less easily available, the pricing mechanism serves to eliminate the poor from getting these goods and services. Now, granted, that the government did create a healthcare operation and the poor person now has some amount of healthcare available. However, as we discussed before, the healthcare that is made available to him would be of much less value than the refrigerator that would have been available to him without the government taxation and spending. So let us recapitulate what we have discussed so far. The first thing that we established here is that government taxation, especially of the rich person, does not affect their lifestyle much. The primary effect of such taxation is to transfer the means of production of goods and services in the economy to the control of the government. The second thing that we established was that when the government controls the means of productions of goods and services in the economy, the total production of goods and services goes down. So when the 
government is hiring people, when the government is buying land, when the government is buying hospitals, the total amounts of goods and services that are produced from these resources when they are operated by the government goes down. Government expenditure is always wasteful. And then the third thing that we finally showed is that because the rich are still richer in spite of taxation, these reduced goods and services are primarily withheld from the poor. And therefore the poor do worse off. And that leads us to the conclusion of this talk, which is that the burden of all taxation, the burden of all government spending is borne by the poor. Does not matter how that funding that the government derived is sourced. It could have been sourced from tariffs. It could have been sourced from income taxes. It could be sourced by selling government bonds. It could be sourced by printing money. Doesn't matter. But the person who bears the brunt of the government's wasteful expenditure is the poor person. Now let us take a moment to discuss some bonus points. It is important to keep in mind what we just discussed, but it is also important to note what we did not discuss. There are a few things that we did not discuss. We did not discuss keeping the wages of the worker high. We did not discuss about preserving jobs in an economy. And there is a reason we did not discuss these things. Jobs don't lead to prosperity. Having high wages for the worker does not lead to prosperity. Having equal wages among all the people in the economy or equal wealth among all the people in the economy does not lead to prosperity. We need to have rising production of goods and services and that is what leads to prosperity in an economy. And to give you an example of why this is important to keep in mind, let us talk about tariffs. Tariffs are excellent in preserving jobs in a sector of, of the economy, in some part of the economy. However, the problem with tariffs is that they necessarily reduce the availability of goods and services in the economy. Once you put tariffs on imports, it is less likely that you will have imported goods and services in the economy. And again, who will be deprived of those goods and services that are now less plentiful? It is the poor. Will the poor have more jobs? Oh yes, there will be people who are working in steel mills, who are working in car factories. However, the total availability of steel, the total availability of cars in the economy will go down and that will be felt the worst by the poor.